November 3rd, 2021. Nohima Graber, a 66-year-old Spanish teacher, was taking a walk after a long day of teaching high school students. She usually takes a stroll in Chautauqua Park after the school day ends. However, this time, she vanishes. Now, once she's reported missing, authorities find her body a few hours later in a wheelbarrow covered with a tarp and railroad ties. Police found that she suffered from a severe head injury which led to her death. The people of Fairfield, Iowa are absolutely devastated. She was beloved by so many in Fairfield High and to see her go out in such a gruesome way shook everyone to their core. Luckily, investigators find the murder rather quickly, however the perpetrators were unexpected to say the least. Now 16 year old Willard Miller watched as his friend Jeremy Goodale brutally attack Miss Graber with a baseball bat before killing her and helping hide the body. Later on, a witness who knew Jeremy but did not take part in the murder came forward and shared a conversation that they had on Snapchat. The messages detail every phase of the crime, from the planning to the attack, concluding with the boys trying to cover up the body. Now strangely, the boys can't help but be tempted to tell someone about the crime. But why? Now the two possible scenarios may be because the boys wanted to brag about the murder of their Spanish teacher, or simply put, they could not handle the guilt that came after the murder. Now it was later revealed that a fellow classmate of Jeremy and Willard states that they listened to an argument between one of the boys and Miss Graber over a failing grade that he wanted to change. Another classmate stated that Willard would become notably hostile when talking about how much he hated his Spanish teacher. When police search the boys' homes, they find their blood-soaked clothes, the boys' war, as well as the baseball bat used in the murder. When Willard was questioned, he confessed to supplying the wheelbarrow, with witnesses stating that they saw a black figure pushing a wheelbarrow carrying an object through the park close to midnight on November 2nd. Video footage shows Miss Graber reaching the park on November 2nd at around 4 p.m. After 40 minutes, someone is seen getting into her car and driving away with a pickup truck closely following. Now due to the clear and obvious pieces of evidence, the two boys are arrested and held on a million dollar bond. Now their defense team tries to move them as juveniles because if the two are convicted, then they would serve less than two years in a correctional facility and later be released at the age of 18. However, the judge thinks otherwise and tries them as adults. Now even though the court treats the boys as adults, they'll most likely not spend a lifetime locked up due to Iowa state law. Now these laws prevent the court from sentencing perpetrators under the ages of 18 because it is seen as cruel and unjust punishment. Now, just a few days ago, a decision was made to give Willard between 30 years and life with parole, while Jeremy gets between 25 years and life with parole. Meanwhile, the community in Fairfield is turning a horrific event into a positive outlook on the future. The student council and staff hosted a fundraising walk to respect the park that she walked in. The proceeds went into a scholarship that was made in Miss Graber's name. Unfortunately, we and the community have no idea what was going on in those boys' heads to commit such a heinous crime. May Miss Graber rest in peace. Ted Bundy, an infamous serial killer who is known for his immense charisma and charm and his impressive ability to use these skills to lure in and gain the trust of his victims. Now Bundy brutally killed and kidnapped around 30 girls in 7 different states between 1974 and 1978. However, the total number of his victims is unknown. Published documents estimate them to be about 100 or maybe more. Today we're going to be talking about a specific girl who thankfully was not added to Bundy's list of victims. In the early morning of January 8th, 1978, Bundy booked into a Holiday Inn next to Florida State University under the name Chris Hagen. Now prior to this, he broke out of jail twice, and with each passing week, he's carjacked multiple vehicles, hitchhiked using motorcycles, train hopped, doing anything he can to reach Florida. His objective was to stay under the radar, get a normal job, and do just about anything to escape the law. A week after he arrives in Tallahassee, Florida, Bundy creeps into FSU's Chi Omega sorority house's back entrance. Now in the span of only 15 minutes, he goes on a bloodthirsty frenzy, 
attacking multiple young women. At 2.45 a.m., 21-year-old Margaret Bowman is beaten over the head with a piece of firewood and is then strangled with a nylon stocking. Not long after, he steps into 20-year-old Lisa Levy's room, where he repeatedly pummels her until she's unconscious, biting her in various areas and sexually assaults her with a hairspray bottle. After this, he cruises along the hallway and enters the room of Kathy Kleiner. However, halfway through entering, he trips over a trunk near Kathy's bed and the young woman wakes up to a dark figure staring her down. Now Bundy proceeds to grab a club, raise it over his head, slamming it on Kathy, breaking her jaw in multiple areas. He continues swinging over and over again, however just before he can finish the job, the room is suddenly filled with light. Now through her window are the headlights of another sorority sister getting out of her boyfriend's car after a date. Now during the moment, she thought to herself that this is God's light. Bundy then bolts out of Kathy's room, leaving her alive. Unfortunately, two of Kathy's sorority sisters pass away. Now two weeks later, Ted Bundy is arrested in Jacksonville, but not before killing his last victim, a 12-year-old girl. When Kathy testifies against Bundy in court, he gives her an ice-cold stare. She then answers all the questions presented to her while not breaking eye contact with Bundy. With the last question being, Kathy, did you see this man in your room? However, since the young woman swore an oath before the trial, she stated that she only saw Bundy's shadow. Thankfully, this small detail did not save Bundy as he was executed by an electric chair on January 24th, 1989.